I smurfed up. I smurfed up. Hang on. There we go. We're back on track. Just like that. Double check. I think Google reformatted it because people are using the low stream to give them a void screen automatically or something. I think that's what must have happened here. Hang on. I smurfed up. Yep, looks good. Oh, video stalled. That's okay. That's cool. We got that running. Hi, Aqua. Tree just passing. I can't move everything to set up I got here, so I'm going to have to keep my head for a second. Um, tree just passing through. We're going to roll. Experience interruptions. Find a way. Okay, I see. That's the screen. Dana tossed out. Boy. Hi, hi, hi. Lori. Sydney. Diver Dude. The lunar. Happy day after. Miss Milky. Oh, Miss Milky's birthday. Right. Happy birthday to you. Sorry, Miss Milky. Yeah, Irina has got a hard name, Miss Milky. That's a twit. Took me like 12 episodes to get it right. Still trying to make screw up to just being nice and lets me off with it. Hi, Kate. Kate got a the Hounds, uh, Fukushima Hounds site set up, a chat room. You can share stuff, folks. And yells, say, I can't pronounce that one either. What else is no? But Kate works. It's easier to remember. Hi, Andrew. Aqua. Pam. Jid. Reram. I'm just warming up, folks. Anybody don't know what I'm doing? It usually takes the first couple of minutes. I kind of steer off in the space and say hi to everybody. And the comments are to your left or live streaming if you happen to walk into the stream like we are. And Japan needs your voice. They all got uh, thyroid cancer from the iodine 131, 132, 133, 129. There's 10 times more 132 and 10 times more again 133. And so times 10 half-life, those two would have had a two-day half-life times 10, so 20 days. And so that's enough to go from one end of the country to the other end of the country over and over. But it didn't stop pouring out. It wasn't just like it came out in a little tiny plume. Hi, Butch. Uh, Damon Dog. David. Kate again. Ron. Happy unbirthday to us, yeah. And let me see. We got Rad Chicks, uh, new link down below, Climate Viewer. That's important, folks. Some amazing researcher, Christina Consolo. And just amazing amount of energy and time and effort and thought um, and heart into her. They're more like, uh, well, there's, there's research. And then she shares it. And she's trained on top of that. You know, and got a lot of years at the universities and everything. So, really cool. Thank you, Miss Milky. We love your site. Uh, we got links below it. Always will. Like you say, it's uh, we get a little bit more articulate, a little bit more focus. We take away the cover a little bit more. We peel that banana back a little tiny bit more every day. <laughs> okay, I'll jump off that. I'll jump over uh, to this, and then I'll click on this way. That's warming up, and potential dose of one point three to four point four. This is New, New Carl's, Carlsbad, New Mexico. Just screwed up. Ten milligrams. Hang on, do that again. So this is Carlsbad, New Mexico. It's a thirty-second clip, but I want you to hear it.
So, you know what she's saying there? She's talking about New Mexico. Now we know that everybody got irradiated on the site and that the release definitely made it in the curls bad. And that, you know, when you look at the truck fire, I just want to touch up on this because this is important. When you look at the truck fire up on Mama Knox's site, <coughs> uh, Carl's bed, look it up, you'll see it. And you can see all the smoke just pouring out of there nonstop. They never went back down in the mine after that. But I don't see the filters cleaning all that smoke up. And nobody went down in the mine after, you know what I'm saying? The filters weren't good enough to contain a truck fire, were they good enough to contain a radioactive fallout is the question. And if they, they would have been totally coated now. Have you ever seen a house fire where you have all that black smoke in your house and they get the fire out and they go in, they got to clean up and, and everything is just, it's coated with this black, this thick black soot and you can't wash it or scrub it or anything it just hates everything you touch it with it makes a bigger fucking mess excuse the language so wouldn't it be safe to say that carlsbad new mexico filters never did work they couldn't have worked the fire the truck fire that they allude happened was probably uh, one of the collapses at one of those football field sized rooms they got down there a half a mile underground because that stuff is not harmful that's just tools and just gloves and it's not harmful at all they're gonna put a half a fucking mile under the ground yeah. <laughs> right so we, we got them in a lie and just well they actually they call me the C word <laughs> but I tore them apart for that one the, one of their mouth pieces the biggest mouth piece down there and that's what that was one of them that time where they used this trick. Oh, it's like an X-ray. Well, that's natural. You can't. You're not ingesting a hot particle. That's what radioactive fallout means. Like you, like your skin can absorb. Uh, you can wash it off you. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to wash off you. Cesium is hard to get off you. Uh, and these hot particles coming out of there. Remember, Carlsbad wasn't americium. Okay, 241. Carlsbad was contaminated with plutonium, but you just, this was uranium-238, the bulk of what they're putting down there. They had to get rid of the most nastiest stuff out there, and this is what they chose to do, was put it down there. And, you know, I showed you the information back when they opened, where they said, yeah, we're gonna put drums and boxes and all kinds of stuff in there, and then the mine is gonna collapse six inches a year around them and build them into a sarcophagus because after 70 years, no institutions on the planet has been able to make a sarcophagus. So as a last desperate struggle, we're gonna spend billions and billions and billions of dollars to put junk down a half a mile into the planet, please. So he's going for a big turkey bone. So it might get a little bit crunchy out here for a few minutes, but sure, wolf through that. Because it's really, I'll turn down my headphones because it gets a little loud for, for some reason compared to what this is on the other side. Fukushima has managed to pollute its country for starters right away. Within 10 days, the country was caked and blanketed, whatever you want to call it. And so they done this illusion where they went around cleaning it up and carrying it away, putting it in bags and everything else. What they're actually doing is grinding it up, moving it to another prefecture, and then burning it in incinerators. And these towns that are chosen basically are ones with less radiation. So they're spreading the radiation out through the entire country on purpose. So if it's high radiation, every high radiation everywhere then it's the same everywhere, it doesn't matter, so to speak. This is their mentality. And they created 5,000 models that they never shared, but was paid for by the taxpayers. They paid for that, okay? The Japanese people, it'll get a bit loud, Zoe. You're a giver, buddy. That's all you can do, and what you can do when a dog got a big turkey bone and they're gonna get busy on it. She's been lazy for like four hours, that bone has been sitting there. This was a nice day today. But look at, uh, you know, if you were living in Fukushima, Japan, what we're doing is illegal. It's criminal. 
they could lock me away in a concentration camp for 10 years. They enacted laws so that journalists can never do what we're doing here. You're not allowed to get out and recite the facts, which is basically what we do here. Let me bring up that other page. Oh, I mean, I'll give you another headline I want you to hear. With that, you give her Zoe. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. Okay, hang on. Kim Buesler. Do, and then this without having some other supply that maintains cesium up here at about a thousand relative to one, so a thousand times higher than it had been. Now I do want to put this in perspective from health safety. I'm not a, a health physicist by any Good stretch, result. but I do want to point out, and I'll go back to. You know there are about twelve becquerels of potassium forty and bananas. Well, 12 becquerels, potassium-40, bananas of eight to banana, I off-gassed the 12 becquerels, potassium-40. They got nothing to do with it. It should be finished soon, folks. I'm going to check it out about it. Okay, no go yelling at her. She never touched it. Oh, we're, um, there you go. You're going to go for it? Up you go. There you go. Settle down. Good dog. X-rays can damage, like from the rods. That kind of x-ray can damage you. But the ones you get in the hospital are, are not the same kind of damage, but just they can damage you, but they're irrelevant. We're talking about hot radioactive particles from the bowels of hell, from three melted cores that the uranium has liquefied. And we have never had this happen before that we know about 100% of enriched uranium, enriched plutonium, that had already been through the chain reaction and then melted down. They're completely different isotopes than what's released from uh, weapons testing, right? They don't last as long. But these stuff's made from the bowels of hell. Think about all the water, the salt water they sprayed on it and all the isotopes. It changed the properties they were getting ingested into the sulfur peroxide urethal compound that made them very transportable, very, uh, you know, sub-micron sizes. To the point where, uh, which reminds me, that's what I wanted to do here. Now, when we're, we wanted to talk about, I'm just going to jump off to uh, Ken for a second. I'll leave that going. And last night, I went out, I had a busy lit night last night. I never stopped. And what's this all about? So, Trans Pacific Air Pollution, okay? The impact of Trans-Pacific transport of mineral dust uh, in the United States was a study I was looking at. Hang on. The importance of uh, injection heights of biomass burning. Right, so they're talking about from uh, the boreal forest fires. How high those particles, now they're big particles, not like Fukushima, but they're big particles, and they were up to eight miles up. Right, but they were big particles. And so there's correlations. Uh, and there was another one, Chinese 2003 emissions of CO2 were larger than expected. And they were talking about the Trans-Pacific, how those pollutions are transported across the Trans-Pacific. Uh, dust crossing the ocean was another one. Harvard, I got quite a lot from Harvard last night that they put up there for the global warming enthusiasts. Harvard 2011 smoke ejection injections heights from fires in North America. Hang on, I'll open that one up. And But I'm gonna do a video with all this stuff for everybody. Um, okay, this work demonstrates the significant effect of fire radiative heat and atmospheric structure on the ultimate rise of fire emissions. And so they're talking about from a few hundred meters to 5,000 meters above the terrain, uh, smoke injection heights from fires in North America. It was a multi-year aerosol smoke plumes. But I, I like, because a lot of people can't wrap their mind around how the radioactive particles can transport. So they always think of the ocean, which is huge. Okay, I'll get to that. But I want you to think about how the dust particles have all the studies, the errors. Let me keep going. I'll close that one off. 
You're gonna go up there, go up, get up on the bed. No, go over and get up and get up, get up on here a little bit. Get up there, because you'll be rattling. Get up there. Okay, settle down over there. I'm only doing that because it gets pretty loudy on the hardwood floor there, but. Okay, I'm almost ready to start on this stuff for you. But I want you to just read some titles because I could digress forever. Dust in Trans-Pacific Asian Pollution Plume. That was uh, Harvard, March uh, 2011. And just let me bring that up for a second. Oh, it didn't. Okay, hang on. Oh, I see what I've done. So these are all studies, ozone production. Maybe that's the right one. I'm sorry, folks. Ozone production, Trans-Pacific Asian pollution plumes, and the implications for ozone air quality in California. So once again, you're talking about the Asian air, how the pollutions have been tracked through a whole lot of studies. That's what I'm trying to basically say to you. And how that has been recorded and transported over to North America, and how it congregated in certain parts of North America. That's just normal pollution. That's not these extraordinarily. And so all these studies, anyway, show correlation. The hotter it was, the higher the pollution will go. And then it's also equated because you start making the hotter the fire, the smaller the particles, right? But just the forest fires and the typical air pollutions, <laughs> that's always going for broke. And the air pollution, well, I apologize, but she's usually snoring, so it's much louder. So, like, all these studies, uh, Asian pollution plumes, and May the 5th, May the 17th samples by aircraft, blah, 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 five to eight kilometer altitudes of just a regular pollution, right? So think about how Fukushima is made in the bowels of hell, hence the hounds of Fukushima, the Fukushima hounds. <laughs> the bells of hell don't really sound cool well it does but I mean there's so many conflicts with that one but the hounds of Fukushima kind of conveys it all anyway because that's where we're coming we're all coming from the bells of hell we all done a lot of soul searching before we got here <laughs> you know that's why we're here and that's where I came because it took you know how long it took me to come up with a name right forever but during some soul searching myself and so he's doing the major crunching. Now it's okay, give a dog raw bones, right, from your animals. If you're gonna eat bird, I eat a lot of bird. I used to love seagull, cooked in a pressure cooker. Oh, I tell you, that was some, never mind. Greenpeace will be all over me. But I grew up in a place where there's no supermarkets. And it's not like you ate the seagulls every day. You didn't eat the old ones, you ate the young saddlebacks. Grandmother used to send me out in the door. I used to <laughs> didn't have motors. We used to row out. Yeah, old 36 inch 12 gauge back. Anyway, I'll digress. Transboundary pollution influences on aerosol concentrations in the United States was another study that I'll be covering. Um, so I'm going to do that with also the dispersal models for Fukushima radioactive fallout. That's what this is all about. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up to let you know what some of the stuff I'm up to, why this is important. A global 3D, and I try to use their models, and every time I went to try to get my hands on their models, because I got some numbers I want to punch in there myself, I, I couldn't get into it. Because I'm just, you know, it's okay for the taxpayers to pay for everything, it's, you know, but then they lock it all up at Ellsworth, Springer, and Wiley. The three biggest publishing houses got 20,000 of the the most influential publishing houses on the planet, between three of them, 20,000, the most influential ones. So, Yeah, they don't control much. A uh, figure shows an illustrated example of actions of visibility improvements, correspondence of emission reduction required on the bottom, blah, blah, blah. So I'll be doing all. Our estimates of the background concentration of several full hires and those of natural concentrations because of the transboundary pollution influences. The influences means that a natural visibility objective cannot be achieved by a domestic emission control alone. Consideration of a background rather than natural visibility, 2016, 64, a haze rule. 
at least in the West, a significant slower schedule, emission reduction, more information, blah, blah, blah. So I got all these studies. I'm not going to try to cover them all here, but uh, I'm bit, and I'm going to make a video. I almost made it today, but I ended up with another video out there. And all of these studies from all the different institutions, I had me way with uh, Harvard last night, and I had me way with uh, Yale again. Yale, it keeps, every time you try to like go to Yale and try to download, try to find stuff, uh, rockers, Zoe. Every time you try to find stuff at Yale, the f one of the first searches will come up is a 911 commission report. <laughs> Just shove that down, everybody. Just shove it down there. Eat it. Eat it. That's your Bible. Okay, let's play another clip of Ken Buesler. There are levels of concern for drinking water in the U.S. It's about 8,000 in those units. So he was talking about bananas just before this. Now we're talking about it, which was 12 becquels in the banana. So if you eat a banana, you off gas um, 12 becquels. Because it's, it's potassium 40. It's just natural, insignificant, normal, indigenous background radiation. And if you drink 8,000 becquels and you got potassium 40 in your water or in your food or in your chips or in your beer or in your soda or whatever the case may be, it's insignificant, normal, indigenous, but that's a lot of number. That's a big fucking number. Now, if that was 8,000 becquels, a cc of 137, you'll get all kinds of tumors because your body attacks all of that, all the radiation that's producing that. And you not only off gas and 4,400 becquels anyway in your body of potassium 40, now you're off gas and 7,000 becquels of cesium 137. So your whole body goes in the heart attack mode because that's what CC-137 does. It goes right to the heart. But, you know, there's 30 times more strontium came with that cesium. 90. So that goes right into the bones. That sequesters into your muscles and into your organs. So all of it will cause that 50 becquels um, would cause, because it's radioactive, ionized uh, radioisotopes. You know, all the daughters all the, all the radio, there's a thousand different radioactive isotopes. Some would say easily 5,000 radioactive isotopes that came out of Fukushima, but a lot of them are short life, so they don't, we don't put them into the equation, but they actually belong in the equation. But these are so much more significant. These are so much tangible for everybody to kind of lock onto and, and get a grip on what really happened to her. That the rain out was continuous and constant, but Japan got it first. Japan is the prisoner. Japan is being destroyed by the system they built to protect them, being paid for by their taxes. It's the most maniacal thing imaginable. They took a democracy and used it to enslave the population and murder them, to turn them infertile and to make them grow cancers because th these radioactive particles don't travel alone. And there was massive amounts that came over, but there was massive amounts that were reliberated over and over and over and burnt incinerators after they were ground up and then spread back over the communities again. It's like a never ending job. Yeah, it'll get better if you just keep doing it, right? <laughs> just keep reliberating up so everybody's breeding it. Just sacrificial the entire population for a paycheck and a pension. That'll never turn you know that'll never pan out. Because after three years, now the cancers are starting to show up. Now the frightful truth of it is starting to show up. Now the numbers are starting to get added up. And the correspondence of the entire country, right across the entire country. Let's go back to Ken Buesler for one second. They have a regulatory limit of about 90,000. So they're allowed by law to put up to about 90,000 becquerels per cubic meter of seas in the ocean. But no, you're not, Ken. Right, so we went from bananas to 12 becquel, potassium 40, and you won't find a banana in E equals MC square equation anywhere. Throw a banana in the nuclear reactor, don't forget the banana, make sure it's fresh. You won't see that in there. But Ken does. Remember, Ken got pulled out of uh, whatever he was up to, and then went on the run with Fukushima. Right, he says that in his lectures. You know, I was a little behind because we heard about Fukushima and we just pulled up state what we were doing. Got all kinds of funding and took off in a boat down to Japan. And Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution is supposed to be... 
And so then their, their information got used by Greenpeace. It got used by the Japanese government over and over and over. They talk about that over and over. So they were the PR, the true PR machine. The real PR machine is Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. The Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation funds the whole bloody thing, just like they fund PBS. And then they're used, I don't think Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation intended for them to use this as a weapon to use all that money to take the media and destroy people, destroy everything for a paycheck, so they can have a friggin' job, so they can have a Twitter account. But Japan, let me go back to Japan, people. What do you think it means when I say to you that these people have to come out and lie, right, to try to account for what's really going on? So that they're muddling the water by saying it went from banana to drinking water, and then because you're allowed... Uh, seven or eight thousand. In some places in America, ninety thousand beckles. If you had ninety thousand beckles of uranium, and you laid it down in front of Camp Usually, he would get up and run, and he wouldn't look back. If he had a laptop there, he would leave it. He would just run. He wouldn't be taking the glass of water over when he ran either. But he would run. So would any of these apologists, because they get they they know what they're talking about, and so why are they telling the lies? Because they have an amazing history, education, like friggin' huge educations. And so they know exactly what they're saying. And they know fact that the CCM not only does it have 30 times more strontium with it, but it ain't going to go anywhere for at least 300 years. But this is how he's acclimating all the institutions and universities and the media and everybody that's listening that the numbers are about to go up for acceptable levels of cesium-137 because so much came, like those studies I was talking about before, like the pollution would have just carried it over. It can come over. It doesn't need a spectacular catalyst to get over here is what I'm trying to say to you. Where I have heard that argument a lot. Oh, you know, it wasn't 9,000 degrees down here, even though it was. They didn't have a nuclear detonation, like, but they did at Unit 3. There was no way you can get in the atmosphere, but we showed you the studies over and over of the plumes being by the Japanese up five miles and eight miles. And then we're talking about this, and I'll get it out there to you so you can see it with your own two eyes. All these studies showing how the plumes can easily go up three, four, five miles just from your car exhaust, just from your chimneys, just from smoking your cigarette. Which reminds me, I didn't have a cigarette. But just from your hairspray could eat. Uh, so is it a far stretch that the plumes that by AP on the anniversary, they're still coming out, the aerosol, and it's still hemorrhaging into the ocean, be a far stretch to say that they would act the same way, particularly when they're smaller, particularly when they're smaller, one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter, you know, super micron sizes, the nano, the very super nano sizes, and so they're more transportable, and they're not salutable, particularly when you take a gram of it produces more radioactive atoms and all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. Well, let's take all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. British Columbia got 26,000 islands here. And every one of those islands got three or four golden, perfectly beautiful sandy beaches. It would take you 71 years to visit each one of those islands if you visit it one a day. But if you took all that sand, that's what I see, just off that, 26,000 islands. That would take you 71 years to visit every single island. That don't mean you can visit all the beaches. Some of these islands are 50 miles long with thousands of beaches. Just all of them, golden beaches. Beautiful. Incredible. Was. And you want to make them airborne. So think of a snowstorm around this planet. But think of it as being invisible. And you can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't fucking hear it. Excuse the language, not that I care. Well, I do with this one. I kind of get a lot of people grew up with butt plugs and they can't deal with somebody that swears because no, none of their friends swore. They, they never swore. You know, uh, their loved ones don't swear. Their boss don't swear. They never swore when they were fighting with their brothers or sisters. They're trying to get their own way. No, they're perfect, normal. They lived in a perfect world where nobody swore. Got any idea how stupid that is? But see, swearing is emotion. You're not allowed to have emotion. Sit up straight, Data. 
Don't show emotion. Don't raise your voice, Dana. I, I hear it all from everybody all the time. Not everybody, but over the years is what I'm saying. You know, I've heard it all. And recently, this is one more cracker. Can't hang on. By the operating license of Tepco, our plants. No, the operating license means you put it all in the sarcophagus. He's talking about 10,000 becquerels now per cubic meter of ocean water is an acceptable level because you're allowed to have uh, 90,000 becquerels of cesium or potassium 40, which got nothing to do with a radioactive isotope. It's irrelevant. If you drink 90,000 becquerels of potassium in your drinking water, which would be extraordinarily high, you off gas 90,000 becquerels of potassium 40 because your body is homeostasis. It can't contain any more potassium 40 than it already has. And it's not, it's not an issue. It's insignificant. All life on this earth is acclimated to that. It's irrelevant. But see, what he's doing is muddling the water and introducing everybody to a new standard. There is no such thing as natural cesium-137 from nuclear reactors because they came from nuclear reactors. They're man-made radioactive particles and atoms and isotopes that we're talking about, neutrons and x-rays and gammas, betas and alphas emissions are totally different because they went through a chain reaction. They got nothing to do with modern nature. They're going to sit on a rock all day. You can take a bat in rocks all day, you're not going to get cancer. You take a bat in bananas all day, you're not going to get cancer. But if you took a bat full of the rods from Fukushima, well, we wouldn't know because nobody's going to go check. And you're not coming back. <laughs> It'll be the last the man, uh, go down with your bad tub. The captain always goes down with his bad tub at the moment. Because those rods are giving off neutrons and x rays for starters. <laughs> and so you don't even want to be in that area. It'll melt your organs. It'll just melt them, right? Look at the video below of Chernobyl where they ran out on the roof for 15 to 20 seconds and then went home and never went on a nuclear site again. And you kind of get a rough idea of what I'm talking about. How frightening the because that was um, graphite in, in Chernobyl that was one third the size of Fukushima that 30 percent of the size of Fukushima that part of the core is still on its way down to China somewhere the ones in Japan are on their way down to Argentina well you know I've read recent studies now about not a half a mile down for sure but thousand degree temperatures will eat up rocks like nothing Rocks will disappear at around 15 to 2,000 degree temperatures. These molten uranium are still releasing all this stuff into the environment. Japan, let me get back on track. Japan, let me, let me finish off with Cam. Similar things. They're allowed to have certain levels in the ocean. That's because these are considered safe. No, they're not. The NRC says it's supposed to be, he's talking about the cesium-137, has to be in a sarcophagus for a quarter million years, Kenny. That's Ken Buesler, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, a little uh, blow-up doll that they sent out to mass murder and indoctrinate and manipulate and deceive uh, everybody on the friggin' planet with. And he's been quoted everywhere, BBC, National Geographic's, we gave him a pretty good overhaul on this site in the last while. <laughs> you don't want to go out and search Ken Buesler because everybody out there made sure that uh, he's not going to be able to run away from this one. We got him cold cocked. He's a maggot. He's a parasite. I mean, the university should pull his degree in a heartbeat. Yeah? Now, let me finish it off. And what we'll talk about at the last part of my talk is, well, what does that mean also for, that might be safe for your exposure, but what about <laughs> 10,000 becquels now is safe for your exposure. See what he's doing? Do you get it? They're all into doing it too. But he's the, he's the main, uh, he's got it down to a science. He's got it all written down on the palm of his hand or something. He, do, he does the same thing everywhere. More like a banana. <laughs> no, he's not, man. If you eat a banana, you off gas it. If the banana's got 12 becquels of cesium to it, you got 12 extra becquels in you till the end of time. Your time, anyway. But it doesn't travel alone. Cesium doesn't travel alone. There's 30 times more strontium-90. You don't want to fuck around with strontium-90. It's got a real shitty attitude. 
you got uranium. The reactors run on uranium, plutonium. They don't run on cesium. They don't run on bananas. They don't run on potassium. 40. Right? This is how he's tricking everybody. But how he's raising a level to make it acceptable. So they probably already made a decision last year at the Bilderberg Group meeting. And they're probably going to try to implement a lot more. Last year was a, a Operation Wildfire. was another one on their agenda. And this is where they had to stamp out dissent. Right? And that's why my sites got hammered recently. I got I got another bunch on my ass today probably for that. Put me on another watch list. But I got so many countries got me on a watch list. I don't even care. Uh, because you got to give them what what they deserve. Otherwise, no one. Someone has to say it, right? Who do? If you don't say it, if if we don't speak up, because that's that's our obligation as a human on this planet, is to speak up. And you know the better, and you can prove it, and you can put it together, is to speak out and say the truth. And that's the thing they fear the most, right? They'll put you on a watch list because they fear that, right? Because they're cowards, and they get paid. They don't even know what they're doing. The ones that are doing it, the dummies, the trolls. They're getting paid just to be an idiot, just to be a pain in the ass. But they actually have no kind of a, actually intelligence. They're the lowest form. That's how come they got the job, right? To come out and say stupid, idiotic stuff from a script. You can imagine what they're like. You can imagine what they're like, right? Seriously. I mean, well, let me try. Let me try a weirdo one more time. Take the fish that we might be eating. So I'll end my talk at the seafood side. Yeah, been, yeah, I know what she does, man. No, by the time it gets over here, well, like all those studies that I was just talking about earlier, right? About the trans-Pacific uh, uh, Asian pollution models and from the forest fire models that cross the Pacific Ocean, settle in America and Canada for extended periods and contribute up to 30 or 40 percent that go up seven or eight miles. So they'll get carried right to the top of the troposphere and above that. But they're not, the, they're not, they're big particles compared to what came out of the bowels of hell of the three melted reactors. Not just from the detonation, not just from the missing pool, but from the aerosol and the atomization of the rods and the 3,450 fuel assemblies that were in each of those reactors. One, two, and three have a 100% meltdown. So that's time, that's, that's almost 300,000 12 foot rods of uh, enriched weaponized uranium and plutonium, okay, that has gone through the chain reaction. So each bundle has 80 rods, and there's 3,450 bundles, you can do the math, and they're 12 foot long. And the material they're using is from nuclear weapons that were sitting. Uh, in silos for decades and now what they're trying to do is create these wicked exotic isotopes but very powerful ones and then use that for directed energy weapons right so this is all about creating because they've been able to create power forever since they've been at this technology but the directed energy weapon they've been at that for now uh, they celebrated the 50 year last year with the lasers Right, which and lots of them are directed energy weapons. If you actually go look up lasers, you'll see all kinds of exotic isotopes that they use for those lasers. Right, they got a huge list of that stuff. There's very interesting, but they don't tell you everything. But they, you know, you can see all kinds of different exotic isotopes that they need, and then the problems with these is they use up the exotic isotopes. Well, just you know, they use it up like a re, you know, like the chain reaction uses up uranium two thirty eight to enrich enough uranium-234, 235, and the plutonium for uh, nuclear reactors so they can start making the directed energy weapons isotopes, the laser. Well, it's more about the directed energy weapons now so they can shoot stuff down from space, so they can shoot uh, missiles and planes down. It's on every ship. It's on all everything they wanted soldiers carrying it around. So what they need is to proliferate the radioactive isotopes but every time, every one of these weapons are dirty bombs. Let me get me back to Japan. And Japan is being sprayed with dirty bombs all day, every day. The entire country, uh, you can dig up any part of Japan, put it in an envelope, and Al-Qaeda, right, the, the people that were paid by the Americans to oust Russia from Afghanistan, will be happy to get their hands on it and spread it out and 
they'll get a paycheck from CIA the next day, then they'll get picked up in a sting and drugged and thrown up, uh, blah, blah, blah. But you see how all that works, right? It's all fabricated. It's all staged. It's all meant to spend more money, more weapons. It's a self. It's the only perpetual motion machine we got on the planet. Are war and Fukushima, and you know the release of the radioactive isotopes, right through Japan. Japan desperately needs that. We need that. We have to do that, and in so doing that, we free ourselves too at the same time. We have four thousand eight hundred universities every day producing studies, published. Not counting ones that are not published. If we took back our system and brought it under control the way it's supposed to be, those 4,800 peer review studies every day could be directed to more old 4,800 peer review studies on how to put nutrition back in your food. The next day, right, electric cars or whatever it is that we, we think we need to be independent or how to put a power source, uh, a self-sustaining power source for everybody's home. 4,800 universities went to work on that problem tomorrow. We would have a solution in no time at all. What about if they went for a whole week's work? Every day, 4,800 universities came on board. And they all collaborated within a year to start building self-sustaining uh, motorcycles, and dirt bikes, and all the typical stuff necessary for just transportation. We would conquer everything. We would take capacitors and everything else. We would find technology. But as long as we got the hideous creature that is nuclear weapon, we're not allowed to look at anything else unless it's nuclear, unless we're studying something about the nuclear industry. Then you can get all the funding you want. But if you want to go out and study the alternative, then that might compete. And so they don't encourage that, and you can't do it on your own. But you can do it if you want to uh, get the education. We'll give you the money to study the nuclear shit. Because anything that could make nuclear look good, we want to know about it. And besides, the taxpayers are paid for it. We're going to lock it up. In Elsewhere, Springer and Wiley's Ivory Towers, as soon as it's published anyway. So, like, the worst thing that can happen to a university is you're published because no one gets to read it. But think about if you had a ticker tape every day with 4,800 peer review academic studies, even if, you know, they're charging all this money to read it, but you would see all kinds of Fukushima studies every day show up. They're at it all the time. But then you got to get Fox News, get the, the apologists up there, or CNN will get the apologists up there, and none of them will touch a study from the institutions. But I mean, how hard would it be for anybody to really look at it the way we look at it tonight, how the forest fires across the Pacific are found contributing to the pollution, and but they're not big particles, they're not, you know, or they're not small particles, they're, they're big particles. So imagine what the little particles from Fukushima that hemi shedded are nonstop, an inconceivable amount at incredible temperatures, Right, so this has infested Japan. It has, uh, think about a big river. So you're 2,000 miles up a river, and here's what you're going to do. You're going to pour a bucket of red dye in that river, and say the river's a half mile wide. And you're going to get in a helicopter, and you're going to follow that red dye down river. 2,000 miles if it takes it and find out what happened to that red dye. You're going to track it as long as you can visually track it. A bucket of dye in the river. Okay, next scenario. Every day you're going to put truckloads of red dye into that river. Every day. And two years later you're going to get in the helicopter and you're going to fly down river and see where the water is clear. And if you've got to go 2,000 miles you're willing to do that. You got all the fuel you need, got a mechanic every 400 miles, blah, 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 someone cooking your burgers or whatever it is you eat. You would probably end up 2,000 miles down river and still be full of doy. Or worse, all the estuaries all the way down would have been full of doy because you never stop pouring doy into the river for two years. What about three years of doing it? Would it be even worse? Yes, of course it would be. Well, that's what's happening at Fukushima. It doesn't stop. It's cumulative. So it's not like a fresh water comes in behind it. It can't because it doesn't stop hemorrhaging out. It's much, much worse than truckloads a day. It's invisible. It's insidious. Its shelf life is uh, the same as the planet. 
for the uranium and just as well for the plutonium. And the fact that these had all that salt water and that study I got below this video of the peroxyurethal sulfur buckyballs and how they allow to transport across long distances and how they're not solutable in water and how they become reliberated and how tiny they truly are. It's like the dust in your house when you pull your curtain back after you clean your house and it's sunny out, you still see those sub-micro. Well, these are much smaller, but just ingesting one of them, your body's going to attack it. And so we got to stop playing games and, and get on with solutions that are like putting the nutrition back in your food and taking the formaldehyde and the glyphosate out of it. Put some potassium back in your food because you used to have it. Put some magnesium back in your food because you used to have it. Put back the nutrients and the macronutrients and the micronutrients and get rid of the toxins. That's a sign of good faith. And engineering natural minerals like DCA, which reduces all tumors, there's a study below, by 70% in three weeks in all tests for lung, liver, tumors, pancreas, breast, kidney, cancers. All cancers reduce to tumors. Because, and it doesn't hurt another cell in your body. Where radiation treatment destroys every cell in your body, trying to kill every one of these things, uh, cancer cells in your body, and if you don't get every single one, uh, then the cancer comes back. And if you get every single one, you're probably not going to come back, but some people do. But they have a very, studies have shown it's still a, it's not, they don't get much extra time. It's a hokey pokey. Dandelion has every mineral, every nutrient. Corporations shouldn't have human rights. They're not entitled to it. It's, it's illegal, same as lobbyists under the charters from the Bill of Rights, the Constitutions, and the Magna Carters. But that's what a democracy is, where corporate personhood can take over and destroy a country like Japan. Where TEPCO can't go to jail, all he can do is get a fine. That's all they can do. Right, because like Google get a half a billion dollar fine, no one even got a criminal record. They just go and keep committing crimes, get another fine, ah, well, whatever. The company took it, the corporate took it, the per corporate person who took it. And Japan doesn't got control anymore. They never did. They're not even trying. They're grinding up the stuff they're picking up, the decontaminations, grinding it up, and then putting it in incinerators. So they're not even fucking trying. Dig a big hole and start putting this shit in it. You don't grind it up and release it into your communities for a paycheck. What the fuck is going through your heads? Just doing what you're told. Well, that's not acceptable. And the fact that the silence of the media out there, they think that's going to save them? They think this is not going to get their children too? They think their kids never breathed in the hot buckyballs in California to Seattle and Mexico and Canada? during April and March. No, no, no. Your loved ones were affected too. Your friends, your families. And so we need to take preventive medicine and we, this was an event. We have to live with this. And we could do that. But GMO engineered all the nutrition out. How you how is your body gonna fight off cancer? When they engineer all the nutrition out of everything that your children crave and covet. If you only ate craft dinner, you would or craft products, you would actually starve to death. Because it's all GMO. There's no minerals we're talking about. It's just the tiniest amount possible, so it actually but it's not even food. Because they took the 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 massive amount each percentages parts per million out of everything. You would need four hundred over four hundred and twenty seven corn on the cob of GMO. To get the same amount of calcium from a single organic corn on the cob. Organic corn on the cob with that amount of calcium, potassium, magnesium. That's amazing. Just a single corn on the cob destroys 427 GMO. Great big, beautiful, thick, picture perfect corn on the cob. How come? Because they engineered it out. And then they engineered glyphosate and formaldehydes in. And so turmeric, nuts, coconut oils, Anything that's natural is what you need. And you can fight off the tumors, but you can't get rid of the radiation. You can't change the fact that you ingested this. But you can change it 
from destroying you and your loved ones by eating healthy. By looking at normal, getting away from GMO, it's engineered to destroy life. There's a really good article below about it. I looked at it, I went through everything there, I agree with everything that's there, 100%. You can go back to my videos and find 400 headlines about GMO in a single video, two hours long. So you can argue with me on a couple of things, you can't argue with me on 400 headlines and peer review studies and that are sourced and vetted. But that's your solution, right? And like I say, when I come out with my uh, presentation in the future, That'll be started off with cancer cures so that people, before they go down that road, already got something work good for them, right? And knowing is the best thing that can happen to you, right? Knowing about all of this, understanding what happened, is, you know, is the most important thing I think you could ever do because you have to know what happened to understand how to deal with it. And then you have to throw in the GMO into these equations, how that affects you and your health and your energy levels and your children and how it's designed to, you know, just deplete your body and keep your body running on empty all the time because you're running auto mode all the time. You know how that works? Well, they took advantage of that. And so your brain thinks it ate something but it didn't, right? And the glossophates stop your body from uptaking the nutrients. And, you know, it'll come out down the road. This, this is the biggest crime imaginable because it's in your baby food, your pet food, your pharmaceuticals, your supplements, your vitamins, everything in the corner shops, almost everything in the supermarket, the rest of it's contaminated. It's frightening that we live in that society, but let's do something about it yourselves and then we'll try to do something about it collectively. But you can do something yourself by getting rid of that GMO out of your food and replacing all your spices and getting rid of margarine and replacing it with butter. Right? Think about how all this works. Watch out for your meat because of the vaccines, the growth hormones. Watch out for all your product, right? And try to go find the small, go back to what it used to be, to the small people that took pride in their growing. Make sure they're not using pesticides. And you'll find, if you went out and got all organic on purpose and ate it, you know what you do? You do the dishes. You probably sweep the floor. Probably go for a fucking walk. Because you got all kinds of energy. That's what happens when you eat organic food. When you eat McDonald's or anything like that, what do you want to do? You want to go lie down. You want to stop. Just duh. And because it got all that aspartame instead of sugar, it's shocking. But you need to avoid all that to beat the cancers that are coming. And make no mistake, I'm not fear-mongering. I'm not exaggerating. That's the problem. Right? I'd rather do anything but these videos, trust me. That's why I'm here. That's why you don't see any advertisement on my page. That's why I do so much research because I have my own best. I need to know all of this because I understand how deadly this is and how much actually came through it. That's an amazing shock to the system for someone like me who's been studying this for years to actually finally get my hands on the information that confirmed it 100%. And so I haven't stopped sharing it with you folks. Everything that knocks the ball out of the park I try to share it with you. And so what I'm doing now is a extended presentation and I'm doing it in two minute segments and that way I can add to, see, uh, along the way and mix it. If I did change my mind before I put out the presentation. <clears throat> and so that covers everything. All of Japan, because it's all polluted. Half a million barrels there, millions here, billions there. One end of Japan, right to the other. Schoolyards with millions of barracuds is nothing unusual after decontaminations because they burn it in the incinerators and re-liberate it into your, those communities. And they're, then they had 5,000 miles and never told the people, but they're the people who paid for it. They're the ones who's paying for their check every week, but they keep hiding it because they feel they'll lose power. But no, that's when their job kicked in. Now they got a job. 
Now they can actually earn their fucking money, right? By doing their job. Instead of reliberating it into the environment, now's the time to build the containers to put your institutions to work. You say, well, we can't put it all, you know, together because of chain reaction. Well, you can shift through a lot of that, and you got to do what you got to do, but you can put it in pools and get rid of the neutrons and the x rays, and you got 1,600 institutions. Instead of making all those peer reviewed academic studies in Japan every day for corporations, you can put them to work on solving uh, how to, to build containers to put this in sarcophagus. How to actually do it after 70 years of institutions not even bothering to try, now's a pretty good time to try. But I mean, you need war crimes in that country. You really do, for just for people to get healing. Did you catch the journeyman vid uh, video about the tsunami? It was only going to be up for a couple of days. Journeyman pictures, you might still catch it up on their site. About the tsunami and Fukushima radiation, stuff like that. Whoa. Whoa, don't re-upload it to your site because you might get dinged for it. But it's worth downloading and having in your collection. And there was one teacher who survived out of 11 teachers, and I think it was like 80 students had died, and 11, uh, 10 teachers had died, and he was the only survivor. And so after three weeks, they finally got a meeting, and where the parents were there, and asked them, why did, why did uh, their children die? And you kind of got to realize what, what was happening here. here. He lost all of his friends, all his comrades, all the children, and lived through it on top of that. And now he's got all the parents. He, so he's there with his head down, you know, like the, the submissive Japanese picture with their head down, eyes closed. All of the teachers were there like that. And the parents were raging. I mean, they were raging. One parent had a shoe, and he said, this is all I got. It was very powerful. Because they're so frustrated. And when you look back on that, they probably wish that never happened to them, that they never done that. You know, I don't think I got the courage that teacher got to, do, to sit there and take that kind of rage without lashing back and just taking their rage when you lost 11 of your friends also. And so that's all debatable. I don't know the whole story about it, but I, I know where the school was too, and the hill was right there. I know they tried their best. No, no one's gonna stay there and commit suicide on purpose. And so, but it was amazing. That was amazing. But that's how the parents got closure. They finally got closure. And that will happen to all of Japan's government officials, but on a much bigger scale, because they can't hide what they got done forever. And they, they need help. You know, that's, that's what our jobs are, to help them, and that helps us. We gotta help these people get freedom of the internet back, to get rid of the martial law, the terrorism law. Like, they can't even do what we're doing here tonight. That's illegal. That's criminal. Like, I'm on your watch list. So are most of you. Don't be laughing so fast. But I'm on your watch list. And I'm on to, <laughs> plus a whole bunch of other watch lists for the nuclear industry and everybody else. But I knew that years ago when I started all this, what I was getting into. And I don't care. I made that decision a long time ago. Nobody's going to change that. No threats, no insults, certainly no... No nonsense, no gibberish is going to change me or influence me or persuade me to, like, it's so much more interesting to read a peer review study than it is to look at CNN or Fox News or BBC or any of them because they're wordless, they're useless, they're, they're commentators, they're conjectures. Right? I want to read the study, make up my own mind, go look up other studies separate from the ones they're recommending and make my own decision at the end of that day that week, that month, or when I finally had enough information to make a decision, because that's how I do it. It goes into a folder, and when you get something else, you find your folder, you toss it in there. And sometimes you might not toss nothing in that folder for another year, but you will always toss it. If you create it, you will toss something in that folder. 
And that's what Fukushima is. We're up to 57 minutes, so I'll give it up. But that's what... Decided I gotta have a smoke. That's what Fukushima is. It's the fact that that haven't got 4,000 chemicals, got no filter. A filter, by the way, makes the particles so small you get through your lungs. Don't worry about it. I'm not. I just do that for people that don't know any better. That's my way of introducing the fact that there's 4,000 chemicals in a cigarette. I know some people react to it, but don't worry about it. Let me close that down. I'll come over and start saying goodnight to everybody. Once again, we're going we're gonna to have to start uh, once or twice a week doing a show where after we come back online, like we let this pop back up and render it, but come back up online and then uh, just answer the questions that were below the previous video. And I'll need help to do that, but that, that, I think that'll be the better way to go. Like do a half an hour show and then do a half an hour of answering the questions from the comments section. Why to, why to wait for the video to pop back up so you can have two scheduled. Kind of iffy, I know. Let me come over and say goodnight to everybody. I didn't think I was going to make it through another hour of night. Went pretty hardcore today there. It pissed me off. I just can't deal with propaganda. It's just the way I am. I'll come over and say goodnight. Hour. Haha, <laughs> I'm off early tonight. We'll see. Probably not, right? Am I still there? Was I talking to myself for the last half an hour? Because I just went for a whole half an hour. Once again, happy belated birthday to Miss Milky. We love you, sweetie. You're awesome. Trust me. I've learned so much off your sites. And they're both below if anybody don't know what I'm talking about later when they're watching this video. Sydney, Aqua. Yeah, Night and Aqua. Matthew. Sylvia. That's a good comment. I'll have to come and read that after. Screen captures. Some stuff to check into. I do copy all the comments and put them into a folder too, by the way. <laughs> it's the first thing I do after, is I just copy the text and it all goes in the folder. Pretty slick, eh? And it takes a second too. Just gotta open up everything. And uh, did I click on something? Hi, Rinderell, Albert, Sweet Jane, Sweet Jane. I, 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 uh, Pasha, Miss Milky. Yeah, we all, we all, uh, the Fuki Hounds and the Beatles rock. <laughs> Miss Milky. Uh, that's too funny. Hi, Annabeck. No, they're not going to put me on no list. They don't want people to find me. Annabeck. Kate, because I'll destroy their narrative. Adam, that's why I can do what I does. <laughs> John, Jed. Um, Ketcher got spam. Let me unspam you before I give it up here. Super web, spoiler web. Uh, Ken S. I'm really stupid. Night, Night Rider. Just a little bit. I was in a good rent and then I realized what time it was. Nuts for art. Anybody? Let me see. I ran a rail. I'm probably going to miss a few people. Tree. Hi, Stephen Moyer. Stephen's really busy, folks. Keep an eye on Stephen Moyer's comments. He's a busy beaver. One. Okay, I'm not, get another minute out of this. Just say hi. Dana tossed a bike. Let me see. I gotta come back down Sydney. I'm almost because I have on the inside and I don't get all the comments. Let me kill. Um, okay, when I'm outside. Albert, everybody. All I can say is that Japan needs your help. Pam. Uh, Kate, there you go. Kate's there. Kate got the Fukushima hound. People want to jump over. I can't, honey. I'm sorry. You don't. I got so much. I can't. I got to get, like, doing these high-quality videos for the documentary is going to eat up every second I got. And I'm out searching jet streams and trans-Pacific, trans-Pacific pollution. Just passing through. Light it up, Dana. <laughs> Carrie Musgrave. Fix it, stupid. Thank you, folks. I'll catch everything after. Miss Milky. Uh, check out Rad Chicks blog. I finally got the links below. Just 
probably going to kill me. Should have that done a while ago. But anyway, her links are below the climbing viewer. She's got some really good stuff, really strong stuff there. I got to get my ass over and finish reading. But I've listened to her interview so many times now, you'd be shocked. You just keep taking so much more away every time. It's fantastic. Ay, 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 y'all say Kate. Yeah, you bet, honey. Thank you, Kate. And by the way, go over to Kate's site. You want to find a link to that blog, y'all say, and you'll see Kate. Um, everybody else will catch you. Daymark, 99999. Dwayne, hi Lisa, Dwayne, Zeke Free, and they Fukushima hounds, the hounds of Fukushima. You're doing the right thing. Look, that's we're winning the battle. The more they attack us, the more that tells us, and they got no choice, right? So they're showing their hands by saying X-rays or bananas or radiations like walking in the sun, or there's natural uranium in the ocean, or there's potassium forty in the drinking water. These, these are scared little children, right? They got an education, they know better, and so they're the, the true lawyers. So Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution is discredited till the end of time because that's what that's all their, uh, the people that go through there say is that kind of stuff. And so does all the other milk pieces out there. That's how we're going to beat them anyway. They can't use the narrative anymore and get away with it because we'll call them out now for sure if we catch it, right? Okay, folks. Let's see, I got to sign out twice. I had to sign in twice, so I'll probably got to sign out twice. Is it going to do it even once? Oh, going to the stall. I like it. Hi, Lori, Annabeck, Toxic, Albert, Adam, Siegfried. Uh, no, now it says stop stream. Let me try that again. <laughs>